Welcome back to the third part of our SAP Tech Byte series on getting started with SQL Script and SAP HANA Cloud. So in this video, we will continue exploring SQL Script and focus on user-defined libraries. If you haven't had a chance to check out parts one and two, I would recommend doing so as we will continue right where we left off. Let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue right where we left off. Um, and we're going to start with the Create SQL Script User Defined Libraries tutorial. Um, go ahead and move this to another monitor. And the first thing we want to do is create a new folder. So we have our folders underneath the source here. Again, we have the data that has our uh, data model. Uh, we have our procedures folder, which we created in the first part of the Tech Byte series. We have our functions folder, which we created in the second part. Now we're going to create a third folder called libraries. So right click on source and say new folder. And give it a name as libraries. Click OK. OK. Next, we want to, once again, let's highlight the libraries folder and say view, find command, and then uh, create SAP HANA database artifact here. Once again, um, we have to change from, um, we have to change to the libraries folder. So let's go ahead and browse and go back to source, choose libraries and click open. The database version is HANA Cloud. And then we'll drop down the artifact type and we'll choose HDB library, okay? Uh, let's give it a name as master data, okay? And finally, click create. Okay, so that created the the file for us. Let's go ahead and click that. Uh, we get the the shell of our library here. Uh, we can start putting code in this now. Okay. So the first thing we want to do, um, firstly, libraries are what they sound like. Um, this allows us to group um, similar or with similar functionality um, or related procedures or functions or even um, scalar variables into one object essentially is what we're doing and we'll see this as we add things to our library here um, why would we want to add uh, a scalar variable to a library perhaps we wanted to share the value across um, procedures um, within our library, right? This is how we can, we can pass um, session variables um, back and forth um, relatively easily. Um, so libraries is, is not something, is not a concept that, that, uh, that is new. I mean, we other database vendors have, um, have their concepts as well, like packages and, and things like that. But libraries is, is, is SAP HANA's way of, of allowing us to group um, functionality together. Uh, we also ship um, um, built-in libraries uh, with canned um, functionality for you, so you can just call them straight away. Uh, I, I believe there's one for um, putting a process to sleep and waking it up. Um, there's a library for working with uh, or manipulating strings, formatting strings. Um, so I believe they're going to continue to add uh, more built-in libraries as we go on. Uh, but if, if, you know, if you want to create your own reusable library, um, this is how you would do it using a user-defined library. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue. The first thing we want to do here is uh, create a variable. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put that between the begin and end here. So here um, we have the keyword public. Right. Um, we also have the keyword private. So what does this mean? This is this is the visibility. OK, so we can have our procedures, our functions and our variables. We can ha we can have them as private 
uh, members or we can have them as public members. So public means that we can see them outside the library. And private means is that they can only be used within the library themselves. So, so maybe there's a supporting function or procedure that you want to have in your library that is related to your other procedures and functions that are public. Maybe that, that, that's just a supporting function or procedure and we don't want that to be callable from outside the library. We would make it private. Um, similarly with, with a, a variable member here, if we wanted just to be able to use this variable within, um, within the functions or procedures of the library, we wouldn't make it private. In this case, we want to have a public variable. So we'll say public variable and then the row count and then we give the type, okay? So next we want to create a public function library member. Um, called employee exists. So let's go ahead and copy in that code. So you can see here, um, public function. Again, this could be public or private. Uh, and then basically the function looks like any other function, um, like if we had it within a, an HDB function uh, artifact, it's the, it's the same thing. Um, so again, here, uh, employee exists, we're taking in an in input parameter of employee ID and returning the result. And basically, we're um, um, doing a select against the employees table with the employee ID. Um, if, we, if we get uh, get a record, we set the result to true. If we don't, false. So pretty, pretty basic, okay? Next, we wanna create a two uh, public procedures one called get employee data and the other get business partner data and very basic um, output parameters um, that look like the that have the, the the structure of the table themselves um, and it, we're just doing a select against the table and passing it to our result set and then we're doing a um, a record count function on the on the intermediate table variable, or I'm sorry, the output parameter, uh, and, and then actually putting that value in the row count, which is a, uh, again, our public variable row count here. Okay. Um, so when we set this from within this procedure, we'll then be able to access that because it's public, we'll be able to access that variable outside uh, of the library as well. And we'll see that when we do the, the, the consumption of the library a little bit later. Okay, so that, that completes our code for our library. We can go ahead and save that. And the next thing we wanna do is create a procedure that consumes parts of this library. So let's go to our procedures folder and let's use what we've learned and say view, find command, uh, create HANA database artifact. We're gonna change the library again. I'm sorry, I'm gonna change the, um, the folder to from libraries to procedures. Uh, we'll set the artifact type to Procedure, if I can find it, there it is. And let's give it the name of get master data. Okay, we'll go ahead and click create. And that gives us our file over here. Let's go ahead and open that. And you can see that we have the shell of our procedure. So first thing that we want to do uh, because our library procedures um, are actually updating the library variable, uh, it means that um, we need to, the consuming procedure needs to be read-write. So we need to make this procedure read-write. And we, by doing, uh, by simply removing the read SQL data, um, keywords there that that makes this read write okay the first thing that we want to do is um, uh, put in some output parameters so let's go ahead and copy and paste those in 
So some output parameters. Let's format this a little bit nicer. Make it a little bit neater to, to look at. All right, so output parameter, um, EX employee exists. Um, that is a scalar output parameter. Uh, table output parameter, EX employees will contain the results of our employee table. Um, employee count, um, another scalar, uh, var output per, uh, scalar output parameter. Uh, business partners uh, will contain the, the business partner data from the table. And then uh, business partner count, again, another scalar output parameter, okay? Okay, so between the begin and end statements, we can uh, enter some code here to do consumption from our, our library. Uh, so the first thing that we'll do is, um, let's go ahead and call our function. So if we put our, our code in here, um, our function employee exists, right? So the name of the library, right, master data, colon, and then the name of our function, employee exists, and we're passing the parameter. This is a, actually an employee ID. Uh, and then the result is coming back in our uh, scalar output parameter. So we're calling this function straight away as, as an, in an assigned statement, right? Um, so this is calling a library function. The next thing we want to do is, is call one of our procedures. So call master data, right? The library master data and the name of the procedure get employee data and then the output parameter is ex employee so the result set is, is is going to be placed in that in that output parameter uh and then you can see here that we're also grabbing the row count um it, from master data as well the row count being whatever value it has at that particular moment in time so since we're, we're grabbing it right after the get employee data, and we know that get employee data actually sets that, um, we're, we're assuming that that row count is, is the number of rows that are in, in our EX employees um, um, output table. Uh, of course, again, this is an assigned statement. So we're, we're moving that row count to our output parameter employee count. Very similarly, uh, we'll do the same thing for business partners. Let's go ahead and copy that in here. Um, same thing, uh, library master data, get business partner data, getting the, the output parameter, and then uh, getting the row count. Same variable, different value, right? Okay, so that should be it. Yes, that looks good. We can go ahead and save this. Okay. We can go ahead and deploy this. And if we did everything correctly, we should get no errors. Yes, that looks good. Okay, so let's go back over to our data, database explorer and just really quickly look at our, um, our library folder here. You can see that master data is there. Uh, we can open that up and you can see the, the code there. Uh, let's go to our procedures folder and see that we have our master get master data procedure. Let's go ahead and right click on that and say generate call statement. Uh, you can see that we have our um, um, our call procedure here with our output parameters, and we're expecting that uh, the the scalar variables output parameters will be within one um, result tab, and then our two table uh, output parameters will be in their their own result tab. So let's go ahead and run this. So like I said, result one is our employees and result two is our business partners. So you can see on the result, the, the result three tab here, we have our, our scalar output parameters. So EPM or employee exists, true. Uh, employee count 33 and BP count 45. And you'll remember that these output parameters were both being assigned by our, our public variable library member. So that wraps up the third video of our SAP Tech Byte series on getting started with SQL Script and SAP HANA Cloud. So join us for our next video, part four, where we will focus on topics like anonymous blocks and debugging SQL Script procedures.